For the first time, a group of Russian deserters have been allowed to stay in a European Union country. French authorities have granted temporary residence permits to six Russian deserters who fled the war in Ukraine. The Russians had no travel documents or passports. The British publication The Guardian reports this. The Russians are currently living in France while their application for political asylum is being considered. For the first time, an EU country has let in a group of deserters who had no travel documents or foreign passports. The Guardian quotes Ivan Chuvilev, press secretary for the group assisting Russian deserters, as saying, the organization helps Russian soldiers avoid military service, and it was this organization that helped the Russians this time. According to Chuvilev, France's decision to accept the Russians could encourage other Russian soldiers to desert, as well as create a precedent from the point of view of other Western countries. France's decision is the result of broad cooperation between the French authorities and a group of human rights organizations. We hope that this marks the beginning of more deserters being allowed into Europe, Chuvilev noted. It is known that Chuvilev's organization has already helped more than 2,000 Russian soldiers escape abroad. Among them are those who have already fought in Ukraine, as well as conscripts and officers who managed to escape before being sent to the front. All six Russian soldiers arrived in Paris on separate flights in recent months after fleeing Russia for Kazakhstan in 2022 and 2023. Unable to travel to Europe and facing the prospect of long-term imprisonment at home, most deserters fled to countries bordering Russia, such as Armenia and Kazakhstan, where they could enter without a passport but remained trapped, without an option to travel onward. Moscow has gone to great lengths to track them down. There has been a growing number of incidents where deserters hiding in post-Soviet countries within reach of the Kremlin have been kidnapped or deported back to Russia. Their precarious situation has prompted louder calls for anti-war activists to provide soldiers with a safe haven by allowing them to seek refuge in the West. Since Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine in February 2022, almost 7,400 soldiers have been tried in military courts for going AWOL and the number of cases rises each month. Russian independent media site Mediazona reported in April. This figure is thought to be a fraction of the total number of deserters, never mind those who want to desert but are too afraid. Britain is considering its own proposals for the destruction of Russian military facilities deep in the territory of the Russian Federation as part of the Victory Plan. As the Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, Alexander Sirsky, reported, he had a telephone conversation with the Chief of the Defence Staff of Great Britain, Admiral Sir Tony Radakin, during which he informed him about the situation at the front. 
During the conversation, they discussed strikes on Russian military facilities. Separately, we discussed the possibilities of hitting the enemy's military targets in operational and strategic depth. The British side is currently working on its own proposals to implement this victory plan, Sirsky said. Sirsky also drew the attention of the British side to violations of international humanitarian law by Russia, war crimes and attacks on critical infrastructure of Ukraine, as well as massive bombing of civilian objects. According to Sirsky, the key areas of cooperation between Ukraine and Britain are the supply of military equipment, training of personnel, and increasing the efficiency of the use of high-tech weapons. Recently, the USA had a telephone conversation with the chief of the defense staff of Great Britain, during which the possibility of strikes on the Russian Federation is discussed. Ukraine has the right to defend itself against Russian aggression, which includes strikes on legitimate targets located within Russian territory, according to former NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg. We are having debates on this matter among allies, but we must always be aware that this is a brutal war, a blatant violation of all international rules and an attempt by Russia to establish control over Ukraine. Ukraine has the right to defend itself. This right includes attacking legitimate military targets on Russian territory, he said. According to Stoltenberg, Russia should not deceive Ukraine's Western partners with threats. From the very beginning, Russia has claimed that Western arms supplies are unacceptable. But we delivered arms. We cannot stop our support because of Russian threats, the former NATO Secretary General said. For several months, Ukraine has been seeking permission from its Western partners to strike deep into Russian territory with foreign weapons. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has consistently emphasized the need for long-range capabilities.